welcome to living life. Uh, we can often feel uncomfortable speaking about sex and relationships in church. Uh, but when we do that, we're actually saying that God doesn't belong in any of those areas, that God should stay at church, but in these areas, he should butt out. Uh, but when we do that, we actually limit who God is. We limit his power and we limit his presence in our lives. In today's passage, we see Paul address three different topics, uh, marriage, celibacy, and divorce. Uh, in a way, he touches on all the different types of relationships that we can have in this world. But at the same time, he shows us how important it is that we need to be led by God in all of these areas. So today, whether you're married or single, young or old, or anything in between, I pray that God is able to speak to you His truth. And we understand that we got to invite Him to all of these different areas everywhere in our lives, that He wants it all. So with that, let's read today's passage together. First Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 16. Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife, and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again, so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married I give this command, not I but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband. But if she does, she must remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified through his wife, and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. But if the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Paul begins today's passage by saying, Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. Uh, the whole section is actually a response to different questions that Paul received from members of the Corinthian church. Uh, the question that the Corinthian church members were asking is, is sex bad? Is sex bad? Uh, if sex is as bad as Christians say it is, uh, shouldn't we just stop having sex, even for married couples? And to that, Paul gives this answer. He says in verses 2 and 3, But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. Uh, the husband shall fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. What Paul is trying to tell us today is that sex is a gift from God to be given to married couples. And it's something that we ought to do and use. And although he uses the word duty here, it should be something that should never be abused or even demanded. As a matter of fact, the crux of Paul's message comes in the next verse. He says in verse 4, 
the wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Uh, scripture tells us, and it's important for those who are already married or for those who plan on getting married, that when you get married, your body doesn't actually belong to you. For a wife, your body belongs to your husband, and to a husband, your body belongs to your wife. It's exactly the same. In Genesis chapter 2, God tells us that this is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. It means that when I got married about 11 years ago, that I gained something, then I lost something. I gained the wife, but I lost my body to her. And the more that I remember that, the more I'm able to understand and live like that, the more I am able to experience and understand fully the love of God that he has for us. Uh, but know this, giving up authority over your body does not mean that you're allowed to demand sex whenever you want. And this is true even for married couples. It's a, merely the fulfillment of a promise that you are able to give one another, to encourage, to love, to support, to forgive. That is mind, body, and spirit coming together. And that's what it means for us to be married. It means for married couples, sex should never be a bargaining tool. It should never be used as a weapon. And withholding sex should never be used against one another as well. That marriage comes with a responsibility for each member to be able to take care of each other, to have an intimate connection like no other relationships that we have. And that's where sex comes in. It's also a reminder of the covenant relationship that we have with God, in the same way that Christ has given fully to us that we ought to give ourselves over to him. So to all your husbands out there, give all of yourselves to your wives. To all the wives out there, give all of yourselves over to your husbands. And those who are wanting to get married someday, make sure that you know that this is a requirement that God gives to every one of us. You know, marriage is one of the most natural things that we can do. Uh, we see it from the very beginning of the Bible all throughout. And when we are getting married and when we are having sex in it, we're just following God's plan in his creation. Now, I pray a prayer of blessing for all the married couples out there today, that whether you've been married one day or 20, 30, 40 years, that God will bless you with an abundance of everlasting love for one another. And by you guys coming together, May you honor and bless each other as well. The second topic that Paul talks about today is about celibacy. In verses 8 and 9, he says, Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried, as I do. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. It is better to marry than to burn with passion. Once again, he's telling us that being single uh, is a special gift from God. As a matter of fact, to be celibate your whole life is actually a very special gift from God that he doesn't give to many people. You know, Paul had it, uh, but it doesn't mean that everybody has to live according to it. And actually, when you are single, that it's this time period is also a gift from God. It doesn't mean that you should waste it and you go out and meet every man or woman, whatever you want out there, and do whatever you want in your life. No. Even your singleness in this moment is a way for you to live for God the only way that singles can. You know, there are ways for you to honor God as a single person that you might not be able to do when you're married. In our church, we actually have a special missions program uh, that is only available for single people. Uh, it's a three-month, six-month, sometimes a year-long commitment that we send out these young adults out to the mission field, uh, but it's only available for single young adults. Why? Uh, because we understand it's hard for married people to be able to leave their families like that. Uh, being single, once again, it does not mean that you have the freedom to do whatever you want. Uh, but what you do as a single man and woman has a direct correlation to your faith in God. You know, being single is a gift. It's a temporary gift for some. It's a permanent gift for a few. But the point is that like any gift, we should never waste it. In your single life, sex matters as well. Your perceptions of it, your practice of it, it will dictate your relationship with God. And if you give yourself over to sexual or morality as a single person, you are dishonoring God's gift to you. You are dishonoring the commands that he has given you. So I pray that in all that you do, 
that you're able to honor God in your singleness. Celebrate the gift of singleness while you can and use that gift to live for God's glory. Uh, lastly, Paul talks about divorce. The last question that Paul is addressing is, should I leave my husband if he's not a Christian? Should I leave and divorce my wife if she's not a Christian? Uh, over and over again, Paul says, no, don't divorce. A husband should not divorce his wife. A wife should not divorce her husband. You know, during Paul's time, divorce was so common. So Paul's saying, no, honor one another. Stay and be holy for one another. Stay and show each other the love of Jesus Christ. You know, these days in our world, I'm sure that we all know divorce is super common as well. And the top reasons for divorce, some people say it's communication or money or finances. Some people say that, you know, we were incompatible, right? We fell out of love. And these are the reasons for divorce. Uh, sounds like valid reasons, perhaps. But if you actually look at most of them, they're for worldly reasons. Now, the top actual reason why people divorce is they don't actually see marriage as a covenant of faith, a covenant ordained by God. We don't look at our spouses as an image bearer of God any longer. We think of them as this person who's around and should exist only for me. So when they don't do that, when they don't fulfill that role, it's easy to let go of all of that. If marriage is a piece of paper, then it's very easy to break it. All you need is another signed piece of paper. But if marriage is the way that God ordained it to be, to give all of yourself mutually to one another, mind, body, soul, and spirit, then divorce is something that will never easily be uh, thought about. It will never actually be an option. I pray that in all the relationships that we have, that we remember God's design for it, that through these relationships that we are able to honor God and we are able to honor one another and be a huge blessing unto everyone. I pray that all of us, even though it might be difficult at times, that we remember the word of God and we're able to follow it today and every day. Wherever you find yourself in your life right now, single, married, in relationships, whatever it is, I pray that you realize that it is a gift from God. You know, everything God has provided for us is for our good and for His good. Let's all be able to submit to Him, submit to His will, sex and relationships included as well. Uh, let's use all the gifts that God has given us, just who we are, our status, our relationships, our spouses, whatever it may be, uh, to be able to glorify Him and honor Him. Let us be able to submit to His will only. Let's all pray. Dear God, we thank You for the gifts that You have provided us. Uh, whether it's the gift of singleness or the gift of marriage, whatever it may be, help us to be able to follow in Your will and be able to truly honor You through all that we do. Lord, these are all amazing gifts that You have provided for us, and we know that You are working for our good. So help us to be able to submit to your good will always. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.